cut off just by getting the night manager out of the way. Because yeah. when I interviewed I wasn't her, in it. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. When I interviewed for that, nobody thought it was going to be as really? as it was. Certainly not Tom Hiddleston or, or anything. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> so that's, that's really mean, isn't it? Because you kind of inherit that slight pressure of, of the Caro. <sighs> I know. Yeah. And... I don't know. <laughs> I, I mean, everybody hopes that things are going to be a success. It is going to be... And I hope that people will be wise enough to not compare them directly because, obviously, they're not the same story. And I think they are totally different. We have Director Park directing six episodes, uh, so visually it looks different. But, uh, yeah, obviously it's going to be compared, and, and I just hope that people will be kind. <laughs> sure, well. Fingers crossed. It's interesting with the character of Charlie because I suppose if you if you see a woman getting recruited, especially back in the in the late seventies, you might think she's a victim. But totally. It's, it's that she's not. No. Um, I think that was the one of the reasons well why lots of people love her in the book and, and when I read the script and in our version is the fact that she is this very normal girl that's put in this situation and she deals with everything so well and so in such a human way and we sympathize with and for her and we follow her and we as the audience she is our gateway into this um, world and at no point do you think that she can't do it and i think that's what's amazing is is she learns and we learn with her and at the end she she's broken but she's grown and um, we don't feel like she's lost she's still got a grab of of of, of I suppose her life and what she's learned so um, it's a lovely story of a very human woman going through this and that's what I loved about her I, mean, I wonder if it would have occurred to them um, in yeah. the Ink Factory to, to release a, a female protagonist had it yeah. not been for the, the last couple of years. I wonder if William's film would have got made. Yeah. You know, if it wasn't yeah. the, the, the climate. Yeah. Because there was this complete lie that nobody wanted to watch no. uh, a female protagonist. Yeah, sure. And I think um, it's an amazing time for someone like me to be working at the moment and for someone um, to be coming up like this in this world, in this climate, where the opportunities are endless now for characters, for cool, interesting female characters. Um, and we get to watch them for so long, and it's it's an amazing time. And you're right, I don't know if there would have been the need for the films that I've been in in the last couple of years to do that. I always find it quite interesting when uh, The Falling came out, when we were doing press for it, everybody kept on asking Carol about how many women there were in the film and Carol kept on saying that it was like a mainly female crew and I didn't quite understand why it was such a big deal and everyone kept on talking about it and I remember thinking like yeah why is this such a big deal and then I did my second project and there were no women on set and then I did my third project and there were barely any women on set and then I realized that oh my god this this was something that I didn't even realize was a thing and I was given luxury on my first job. Um, and I don't know, I, I do find that interesting that it is changing and people are, you know, talking about it and that's fantastic. But yeah, I didn't understand the gold that I'd had on my first job really. Um, so it's changing everywhere, slowly. Okay. Can, I, can I ask you about Amy March? God, I love Amy March. Um, and if not, if you can't talk about the film, no. maybe just the character. Because, I, I can, yeah. I mean, everybody knows I'm in it. Obviously, I can't <laughs> talk about it too much. But yeah, Amy, I'm very lucky to play her. Um, and my God, the women that I get to work with on that film. And I have, I've only done a little bit. I haven't really got into it yet. And I'm going to be doing it for a lot longer. Um, but I'm very excited. And I think Little Women is a, is a book that has meant so much to so many people. Whether you disliked it or liked it, it, it resonates with women because same thing. With, <laughs> it's the same conversations that women have now. What I think is so amazing is actually you know at that time that is was that was all that was to offer for women was that you you get married and you have babies and and there is this amazing one that doesn't want to do that and she wants to earn her own money and i think that storyline is always relevant whether it's that you are settling down and having babies and that is your storyline or that you want to earn your own money um and and i'm so lucky to be in the remake 
Um, and I hope they do an all right job. <laughs> yeah, I have to leave it now, I'm sure. How did you make your choices and how did you avoid getting typecast? Because did you get offered a lot of the same things if you made a success of one thing? Uh, which film are we talking about? Uh, nothing in particular, okay. actually, but I was, th I was thinking about The Falling, which is one of the first Oh, movies yes, 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 yes. So, um, how did you avoid not getting pigeonholed into, into one role? I don't know. I don't, I think... But the thing is, though, I think that did that did happen. So when I did The Falling, I then got lots of, like... Um, pretty girl parts and it was like no how have you taken that away from the falling and I think it's just it's it's up to you really um, and it's also the people that you surround yourself as in your team I think what was really important to me when things were moving is that yeah there are there's, there's two ways of doing it you can do everything that you read or we can decide and we can choose and we can be really meticulous about how you want to do this and for me it's always been a massive thing to play women that um, excite me and inspire me and I said this a lot during Lady Macbeth press was that they don't even have to be nice I just want to play women that I recognize or that it will mean something to someone when they watch it and so it's kind of up to you to decide what and when you want to do something playing the same part twice has never particularly interested me because I feel like I've 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 done it I've I've done what I needed to do then um, but that's why this is so lovely is because you get to do it for such a long time and you really get to know who you're playing by the end um, but no I, I I don't know about typecasting <laughs> it's, it's interesting though I yeah I am. I, that's not to say, I mean, obviously when you do the scenes, it is always awkward because you're doing a completely unnatural thing with like 30 people around you watching you. That's not in any way natural. But um, you do it. What am I awkward about? Because I don't oh, like yeah. changing rooms at gyms when women are... Flossing. Oh, don't no. Uh, yes, you know? it's unnecessary. I don't mean to dance me Un either. Unnecessary flexibility at the wrong time. Don't need it. <laughs> <laughs> that you've got so many projects that people haven't seen yet. Yeah, so that's the you, weirdest thing. What happens when you suddenly explode onto the scene? Because Alex was saying, mm. he's glad he knows you now. He's screenshotting your conversations to let people know that he did talk to you before you got pregnant. <laughs> he's so weird. I love him. I, <laughs> no, nothing's going to happen. I think what's so interesting is like I've, I've been able to, for the past couple of years, work with like such amazing talent that every single time I've gone I've very much been the baby and I've loved that because people don't know who I am my stuff isn't out and my stuff still isn't out and I, I love that it's like I've been able to work with all these people and be a sponge um, and, and, and no one knows anything and I don't know if it will pop pop I'll, if, I, if that happens I'll just dye my hair <laughs> and pretend that it's not me. <laughs> are, you, are you ready to be recognised? I like? don't think I will be. I don't think I have a particularly like recognisable face. Because, no, and I'll tell you this, and I'm, I'm not being stupid. In everything I've done, I've looked completely different. And I think that audiences are really lovely in the fact that when they watch you, they do just accept what they see on screen. And that's what I love about what we do and the world that we make, is that if it's believable enough, they see you and they go, oh, you're the one with the blonde hair there. And then, of course, you do a film with red hair and they're like, wait, hang on a second, that's the same person. And I love that. So I, I think if I can keep on doing that for a while, I think I'll be all right. I bet you look good in wigs anyway. I hate wigs. Mm -hmm. I had to wear a wig for fighting with my family when I was... I, that, that one's coming out at some point, I hope. Uh, I have black hair in that one, and then I also have blonde hair, and I had to wear a wig because I was wrestling, obviously. It's just, it's like horrible. So I'm just trying to stay away from wigs. But if we sit here this time next year, what do you hope has happened? What do you hope you've achieved? Mm, what do I hope I've achieved? I hope I achieved to go on a holiday, and I know that sounds awful, but I really want to just eat loads of food and sunbathe. Where do you want to go? Um, probably Greece, because I love Greece, and Greece is in this, and I love filming there. What do I don't know what I want to achieve. I want to, I want to breathe a bit, and I want to experience a bit, a bit of life. I think. I think it's equally just as important to, as well as choosing the right things. I think you have to have the material to in yourself to know um, what you're doing. And I haven't done catching up on that in a while. So I, I want to um, breathe a bit and I want to, you know, do some learning. And then I want to find another amazing project with that new knowledge. 
I hope I can do that in the next year. <laughs> Someone get this girl a holiday. Yeah, well, not just like a, a year-long holiday. I don't want that. I'd be so bored. You know what? A play. I'd love to do a play. Play? I'd love to do a play, but with some time to prep myself because I haven't been trained, so that's what I'd love to do. Amazing. Can't wait for that. I know. <laughs> so Thank you. you. Lovely to chat to you. you get to have a bit of chill time. On oh, that. tickling me. Oh, dear. <laughs> Could you imagine? <laughs> Just that on camera. Back away from forums, please. Yes. <laughs> That's a lovely dress. Oh, babe, thank Where's you. it from? Couldn't tell you. Oh. New look, I think. Yeah. Can you see? Go for it. Oh, sorry. Florence, lovely to see you. Hello, hello. Super wearing. No, no, it's oh. a two piece again. But white, but creamy denim. Denim? Oh, yeah, denim. There we go. Just be careful of the ketchup today. Well, I already got a bit of makeup on the collar, so I'm being really still. <laughs> lovely to see you yesterday yes, at the yes. world premiere with about 87,000 members of cast. I know. Wasn't it lovely, though? Exactly. And we haven't seen one another since rap, so uh, that was a really wonderful moment, and we got to have that on the carpet. So are you beautiful. to blame for Alexander's terrible headache this morning? Does he have a terrible headache? Did he tell you that? He did, oh. and he has very bloodshot eyes. <laughs> Maybe my makeup artist can give us some <laughs> eye drops. <laughs> what happened last night is the question. What happened? We just had a really lovely, and it was totally tame. We had a really lovely time. I think what's so funny is like, the, our lives are so busy and so fun and you meet these incredibly talented people and you live with them for months. And uh, you know, we've shot since January to June and then it's over. And then you move on to the next one or you have time off and then you say goodbye to all these people that have become your family. And then you see them again at the premiere and all you want to do is just chat. So that's all we did. We just had wine and chatted all night long and it was just really lovely to see everyone. So what happened when you got the phone call about being in a film with the, the scary guy from Batman <laughs> and Tarzan? <laughs> oh my God. Um, yeah, I just, it was all a bit of a whirlwind actually because it was pretty much summer last year there was kind of talk in the industry that they were going to make a, not another night manager but they were going to make another series from the night manager creators and I, everyone was talking about it and it was at this time in my career where I was like just come, I mean, I'm still coming up now but it was just coming up and people kind of knew but they didn't really but I'd met Director Park beforehand and I remember I was going up for the audition and it, it wasn't going to happen. I wasn't going to get it because obviously it needs to go to someone huge. And I remember at the time, you know, we, me and my team were like, yeah, we'll give it a go, but it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. And then Director Park got on the job and then suddenly it, I, I was offered it and I got told on the phone. I was like, what? Uh, unbelievable. Unbelievable. And I, I, I'm still I, I'm still a bit gobsmacked that I got it and that we did it. Um, so, yeah, a bit of a weird dream come true. And what an amazing character to work on for so long. And so. I love the way that yesterday you called him Tom Hiddle, Hiddlebum. Hiddlesbum. Hiddlesbum. Yep. <laughs> yep. There's some scenes in here that can really take on the Hiddlesbum. Mm. I don't know. I'm trying to... Everybody keeps on talking about these scenes and I don't know what scenes. Well, Fred's Alexander, and he said that in every single contract he's got, he writes in that he has to be naked. Oh, does he? Yes. <laughs> what? You're a lucky lady. What? <laughs> I did not... He's never naked in this series, though. So that's weird. And Unless he's just naked in his trailer. Just, like, that's what he's put in his contract. <laughs> weird. Do you worry about uh, people seeing... Raunchy scenes or the no. does it ever get awkward? No. I think growing up, my parents were so um, just open about like humans and people and love and you know and and how bodies grow and and so like growing up, we would watch just amazing French or Italian films or Spanish films and they'd all be doing sex scenes with their boobs out and it was like. I'm so glad that I had that kind of understanding of that bodies are completely normal and we all have boobs or nipples and we all have pubes. And I, I think growing up that was such a cool thing to know. So working in the industry and, and being weird about that kind of stuff but doing it wouldn't make any sense. So I've never, I've never had a problem with doing it and I, I, I want people to see bodies because we all have them um, and my, fa my family is super cool and they get it and, and the first couple of times I would cringe, I'd totally cringe and I'd just like kind of hold my face like this and just wait for it to be over but um, they understand and they get it and they know what I do. Are you awkward about anything? 